Hi, today we're looking at this Atem GT 2010 Soldier 9, and this is quite a basic Soldier 9. Uh, it's only rated for 10 watts of heating power, and this plugs into a standard 5 volt USB port. It can draw around 2.1 amps. We've got the controller at this end, so this allows us to set a regulated temperature, and then on the end of a piece of flex, we've got our handpiece itself. So this one's coming in a little bit cheaper than most of the soldier knives that we've looked at. Uh, this one's £35 delivered, but uh, quite a substantial amount of that cost is actually the cartridges. They've got Weller type cartridges where we've got this 3.5mm jack at one end. Then it's quite a beefy assembly here, and then the cartridge at the very end where the soldering tip is. So this can quickly add up in cost if you want to have a couple of soldering cartridges. And to be honest, these are only about £5 cheaper than most of the Metcal and JVC cartridges. So uh, really quite expensive here for the cartridges themselves. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay. And PCBWay are pretty much your one-stop shop for all your home and professional projects. As you know, you can get prototype and advanced PCBs manufactured here for extremely competitive prices. They also offer PCB assembly services where you can get your components assembled onto the boards, offering both single and double-sided loads. You can also get mechanical parts made, so CNC machining, 3D printing, as well as sheet metal folding. And then we have the PCBWay community, where people like you can share your really interesting projects with other people and allow them to replicate it themselves. You can upload your project into the various categories, uh, for example, LEDs, displays and matrices. Click on a project that is of interest to you. And as you can see here, you can order just the PCB or you can order it fully assembled from PCBWay and have it shipped to your door. So that's PCBWay services. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some parts made. Now the handpiece is quite basic, uh, pretty similar in size to a JVC T245 type handpiece, uh, but it is extremely lightweight and the cartridge just plugs in the end here so you just pull it out to remove it and you can swap it around once you take the cartridge out you can feel really how light this is this is uh, extremely lightweight basically there's nothing in it other than the plastic housing and then there are some contacts at the end that connect to this silicone cable it does have a quite a nice strain relief on there and when it arrives it also comes with this mounted over the top here so this is quite useful just to protect the soldier nine tip during storage but you can also use this to remove the cartridge while it's hot if you want to swap out the cartridge in use so that's a fairly nice design uh, and it actually works quite well because many of the tips that you can buy are quite pointy and it'd be very easy to uh, accidentally pierce yourself on these so I did actually buy two extra cartridges. We've got a 3mm chisel and a 1.3mm chisel. Now the 3mm chisel really isn't designed for high power use. It's just to provide optimal contact on any pad because even the large tip like this is limited to 10 watts of heating power. The 1.3 is probably most suited to general purpose soldering. It looks like this would work for all of your normal type of soldering needs. Uh, but you can see why these cartridges are so expensive. We've got a cartridge with a temperature sensor in the end here. But then we've got this machined part that appears to be solid. I mean, it's really quite a heavyweight cartridge. And then a gold-plated 3.5mm connector on here. I just think possibly these cartridges are disproportionate to the actual soldier line it's being used in. But uh, that's where most of your money is going into this heavily machined uh, cartridge design. The controller is fairly basic, we've got a USB port on one side, three buttons to control the temperature and the lead that's non-removable going off to the soldering iron. Then just on the back side is just some of the markings saying it's a 10 watt, 5 volt, 2.1 amp um, controller. So we plug it into the USB port, it says we've got version 6 of the firmware and then it starts creeping up in temperature and it does go up pretty slowly here. And we've got three presets, A, B and C, and then we've got this sort of power level meter along the bottom. So currently it's putting all its power into the cartridge. When we press set, we can scroll through the presets. So by default, it's 300, 350 and 400. And then when you leave it, it selects that temperature. You can also change it in one degrees in increment. So you just press the up and down buttons. Or if you hold it down, it goes up in 10 degrees C, which actually works quite well, so very effective. When 
it's detected that you haven't used the soldier line for 10 minutes. It goes into sleep mode, so it says SLP, and there is the ability to adjust the calibration. And this is what it looks like inside. So we've got the LCD on the top side and the three tactile switches underneath it. And then on the bottom side of the PCB, we've got all of the components. Let's have a quick look under the microscope. Starting on the left-hand side, we've got a USB connector. We've got a 3.3 volt regulator for the electronics on this little board. Then we've got a Holtec HT16C21. This is a segment LCD driver for driving bare LCDs, but it allows you to do it through a standard interface to a normal microcontroller. Then we've got an RS85580 drift low noise op amp for reading the thermocouple and amplifying its output. Uh, then we've got a little S103. Uh, this is actually an STM32 processor for controlling all the functionality on the unit. And then finally, just a P-channel MOSFET for driving the heating element. And there's really not a lot else on there, just passives for the rest of the stuff. Uh, you can see the switches and some debouncing capacitors and resistors for those and a couple of resistors at the end there for the backlight on the LCD. So really straightforward design, all controlled from that little STM32 in the center there. It's currently set to 350 degrees C, so let's have a look at the calibration. Looks like it's about 10 degrees out probably. Let's change it to 400. Still putting maximum power into the cartridge even though it says it's at 400 degrees C and then it's dropped off. So yeah, probably uh, just a little bit over 10 degrees out at 400 C. So the calibration uh, seems to be fairly reasonable, just about 10 degrees out probably. <laughs> Now you might wonder why I didn't use the 3mm cartridge here, but it looks like the cartridge that I received from the AliExpress seller is faulty. You plug it in and it comes up with error 1, which means that there's an error with the cartridge. And when you measure the resistance, if we do it between the ring and the tip, it comes up about 500k. Uh, when you do that on the other two cartridges that I received, uh, between ring and tip, 2.3 ohms. 
and about 2.5 ohms. So those sound like we've got the heating element in place and this one appears to be faulty. So I'll see if I can get my money back from the AliExpress seller uh, because obviously that cartridge isn't going to be any use to us. So that's the Atem GT 2010 soldering iron and as a soldering iron it does work. You'd be able to do basic through hole soldering and some surface mount work uh, and it would work quite nicely. It does seem to uh, behave itself and it's quite comfortable to use but uh, I don't really understand what the market is for such a low power soldering iron. I mean once you've added in one additional cartridge which you're almost certainly going to need that pointer cartridge isn't really that much good for soldering you're spending £50 on this solution at least. You probably want to buy the optional stand as well, which takes it up to about £65. And if you think about some of the USB soldering irons that we've looked at recently, they are significantly more fully featured, higher power, and not really that much more expensive. So they're actually a lot more usable. And even when you think about traditional soldering irons, if we go on Farnell, for example, uh, there's plenty of cheap soldering irons here uh, for sub £50 and these are proper soldering stations with the um, handpiece cradle and everything possibly slightly older technology I mean the most basic really is the Antec CS18 there was also the 25 watt version these aren't temperature controlled uh, but they're such low power that you can leave them burning on and the uh, heating element will last ages I mean I had one of these when I was growing up used it for five or six years absolutely no problems whatsoever it soldered everything that I needed it to that's coming in at £23 excluding VAT then there's some temperature controlled ones, so 48 watt, watt soldering iron here with an analogue control. Uh, that's coming in at just £12 for this, um, which is certainly going to outperform uh, the Aten that we've got here. There's one with a digital interface as well. Almost looks like an old uh, Weller handpiece actually here. But yeah, this one's got a digital interface up and down control of the temperature. That's £25 plus VAT and another analogue type one here with some accessories with it and that's £26 plus VAT. So as you can see, uh, even if you go to some very basic type soldier lines, you're getting probably better value for money and more performance than this particular unit. I mean, it's quite, kind of quite cute and quite portable, but when you compare it to a USB soldier iron, uh, where you can just carry the handpiece around and just plug it into a standard USB cable, uh, I think this one looks a lot less attractive. However, if someone does have a use for this, I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. Uh, I might try and donate this one to a local school or something like that because I'm certainly not going to be using this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Any thoughts and comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring these videos. Don't forget to visit PCBWay if you're thinking about getting some PCBs made or even some 3D printed parts made. Uh, so until next time, thanks for watching.